What's good, guys? YouTube! What's good? It's your boy T, and I'm back again with another live, guys. This is another vertical live. And today's live, guys, is going to be on five players that I believe that are must-have and it's way early, right? This is before the draft. This is before the rookie draft. Um, things are going to change. But right now, these are players that I'm targeting in my 2024 Fantasy Football League. So I'm going to talk about five guys and break them down why you should be targeting these guys. And most of your league makes are not going to be targeting all these guys. And some of these guys, yes. As you see on the thumbnail, Puka Nakua, people are going to be targeting him. But some of these other guys, they're not going to be at the, at a certain ADP. So, guys, make sure you hit the like button on the way in here. Uh, what it do, Kevin? I see you, bro, bro. Yes, sir. Let me know if I'm skipping anything, guys. Let me know if I'm skipping anything. Make sure, Let me know if the live is smooth or not. Okay. So, let's start off with Michael Pittman, the wide receiver from the Indianapolis Colts. So, guys, the reason I believe he is a must-have guy going to your 2024 drafts is this guy 6'4", 220 pounds. And when you have that type of size and statue, pause, you are a great target for a quarterback, especially a young quarterback like Anthony Richardson where you can post guys up on like... I'm going to tell you a couple things from last that he did that I think is going to translate into 2024. This guy was ninth in targets in the whole NFL. I, I mean, this is a run first Jonathan Taylor type Anthony Richardson team. And this guy had was ninth in targets. This guy had 150 targets as a wide receiver one. So to me, automatically, those targets are going to go up from 150, let's say to 168, 172. As I say, we're gonna because he's gonna stay healthy all year. We'll just assume that and we'll throw on maybe two or three extra targets a game. So I'm saying that's gonna be 162, 168 to 172. Also, guys, he had 109 receptions. That was fourth in the NFL for a wide receiver. This guy had 109 receptions. Nobody thought that Michael Pittman would have that many receptions. I know I didn't. Guys, make sure you hit the like button on the way in. And so this guy was fourth in receptions in the league. So to me, that's going even, he has even a bigger ceiling going into this year. Um, they're going to give him a nice bag. He played out of his mind. He's a young guy. He's not corner in the league, right? You don't have to be fast to get on corners because the guy 6'4", 220, runs a 4'5". That's moving for a 220-pound guy that's 6'4". that can jump out the gym. So, and also, guys, he had a little bit over 1,100 yards. He missed like two or three games at the end of the season. So if he would have played the whole season, this guy probably could have had 1,300 yards easily. So if he would have had, I believe he would have even had a bigger year. This team would have probably made the playoff with Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson was balling out of his mind. He was actually out doing C.J. Stroud. And C.J. Stroud had a tremendous season. And Anthony Richardson was out playing C.J. Stroud. For his dual threat, right? Yeah, CJ Stroud is a better throw of the ball right now, but winning games and, and making plays at big times, Anthony Richardson was doing that. He had won some big games for the Colts. I think the Colts that they beat uh Baltimore, they almost beat Baltimore Ravens, who won what over 13, 14 games. So let's move on to my number two player. And also, guys, hey, make sure you sign up as a member. I will be doing a lot of mock drafts. And, guys, I will be offering a, a draft guide this year. And it's going to be through a Patreon link, right? So once you get the Patreon link, you sign up for the Patreon, you will be getting my draft guide. And if you are a member already, if you pro bowl tier or better, you would get a discount on that. And also, guys, I will be offering a consultation with that draft guide. It's a special thing. It's going to be $75 for the consultation with the draft guide. And I'm going to help you out with your draft. I'm going to be there for you the whole draft on the telephone. You can set that time slot up. That's what I will be offering. But anyway, let's get on to my number two guy. My number two guy. My number two guy, guys, is going to be Trey McBride from the Arizona Cardinals, the tight end. Guys, these are players that I've been talking about. These are my honey spot guys. These are the guys that I think are going to boom this year. 
Trey McBride guys is 6'3, 246 pounds. So this is a uh a hybrid type Travis Kelsey type size with speed type guy, right? Runs like a 4'6, but it's 250 pounds plus, right? This guy's still early in his career. So he's going to put on more weight. You know, look at Travis Kelsey from when he came in the league and how he ended. it. He was a he's a bigger guy now. Um, so guys, um, far as in yards, this guy was seventh in yards with 825 yards. And he he didn't start playing until probably like the sixth week of the season. So in the first four games, they with Joshua Dobbs, they really wasn't targeting Trey McBride. Like he was getting a couple targets, three or four, maybe. But when uh they traded Joshua Dobbs. And Kyler got ready to come in there. That's when Trey went off and was probably the second best tight end in the game outside of David Njoku. David Njoku is another player that I really like. Make sure you hit the like button, guys. So I believe that Trey McBride, guys, is going to be um, a tight end that you can get for discount that you don't have to spend a high waiver or a high, a high draft pick on. I'm sorry, not waiver, but a high draft pick on and be able to get this guy for a deal. And this guy's probably going to outperform Travis Kelsey because Travis Kelsey is an older tight end now. He's not going to be getting 15 targets in week three. Like, waiting, they trying to win championships there. Um, the guy was six in targets with 105 targets as a tight end, guys. So, and also he had 81. He was also uh, fifth in receptions as a tight end. He had 81 receptions. So this is only what two. I mean, he only played what eight weeks. So imagine if he'd have played all sixteen weeks at a full capacity. This guy probably would have been a top three tight end easily. He won a lot of people championships because he was balling in the fantasy football playoffs. All right. So let's move on to my number three guy. Let's move on to my number three guy. My number three guy is going to be Puka Nakua. Yes, guys, Puka Nakua. And the reason why I like Puka Nakua, guys, I believe this guy's gonna take over uh for take over over the Cooper Cup role. Like Cooper Cup is gonna play second fiddle to Puka Nakua. Uh guys, Puka Nakua is 6'2, 205. He had seven. Um he was seventh in targets in the whole NFL for his wide receiver with 153. He was also eighth in receptions with a 105. And he also was fourth in yards for his wide receivers with 1,400 yards, almost 1,500 yards, guys. He had almost 1,500 yards this year. So that's to me, that's going up. Um, Cooper Cup is going to have a good role. I know a lot of people might be nervous. Oh, well, what about Cooper Cup? Cooper Cup is going to be a nice top 24 wide receiver. At times, he's going to be in the top 12. He could have some top five weeks. But Puka Nakua is going to be the go-to guy, and we saw that in the playoff game. Now, I know Cooper Cup went through some injuries, so it might be different, but Cooper Cup is older too. So you don't want to worry out your older 30-year-old wide receivers all season long when you got young 22, 21-year-old guys like Puka Nakua who are phenoms. Did y'all see that dude in the All-Star game? Did you see him in the All-Star game? He balled out in the All-Star game. All right, so let's move on to my fourth guy, and this is a running back, and this is Brees Hall. Yes, guys, Brees Hall. This guy's 6'1", 220, and this guy, guys, only had 222 carries. What's going on? I see you, Galloway. What's up, bro, bro? This guy had 222 carries, and that's because he didn't start. Like, first four weeks, they was only giving him, like, eight carries. That's why they got Dalvin Cook and they had a, a Bender Kanda. They drafted him because they didn't want to run Breach Hall in the ground early with it coming off a knee injury. But once this guy got go going in the fourth quadrant, which is your fantasy football playoff, this guy was balling. That's why I'm taking him over CMC this year. Guys, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. This is Cutting Edge Content. We got we didn't have eight people in here, and I only see two likes. Let's get the likes up. If you want me to do these... And you want me to do this content like this? Get the get the likes up, guys. I'm gonna provide because these players, you're gonna pick these players. You might not like the way I'm breaking them down, but you're gonna pick these players because I said it. And I'm not saying but just because I'm saying it, but these players are gonna hit. Not 90% of these players are gonna hit. I'm, I'm telling you that now. If they don't get hurt. So make sure you hit the like button. Um so 222 carries, guys. That's not a lot. 
So, but down the last four games of the season for your fantasy football playoffs, this guy was catching six or seven passes a game, getting goal line carries with no quarterback, with Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle out there. So imagine when Aaron Rodgers comes back and they got somebody where the defense is going to have to really respect and back up and Breach Hall going to have more running lanes with a better offensive line, with a better scheme. So that's what I'm telling you. Breach Hall, to me, guys, is a first-round pick. I'm taking him in the first round. If that guy is there in the second line, the second round, you killed him. You killed him. So um, also he averaged four-point yards a carry. That's going to get better. He's coming off a knee injury. And the only reason why I'm taking a guy off a knee injury I gotta see, it's gotta be a young running back, and I gotta see you get better. And I saw that from Breach Hall. All right, guys, last but not least, my fifth and final guy. My fifth and final guy is gonna be Jordan Love, guys. Yes, Jordan Love. He's 6'4, 219. This guy is standing over most offensive linemen, and he can push the ball downfield at an elite level. And he's going real late in your fantasy football drafts. This guy, guys, finished, he had, he was fifth in attempts. So those type of quarterbacks. And four passing touchdowns, four uh, four points passing touchdown, and even six point passing touchdowns is okay to get if you're not a dual threat. Why you passing the ball a lot, especially in the green zone? So I would love this. I should have had this statistic where I show how many times he attempted to pass in the green zone. And this guy was probably number one. He had a lot of passing touchdowns. He was actually number two passing touchdowns in the NFL as his first year starting. So this guy had. 32 passing touchdowns. So that's, that's going to go up. That's going to go up probably to 40. That team, that's a young team. They don't have anybody over 25 on that team outside of Aaron Jones. The offensive line is young. The defense is young. Uh, Jordan Love also, guys, had 4,100 yards passing, which was seventh in the league, which was seventh. So all that stuff is getting better, guys. So, guys, uh, Michael Pittman, Trey McBride, Puka Nakua, and Bree Child and Jordan Love are guys that you need to have on your must-have. And it's but it's real early, but I'm still I'm gonna stick with it. These are must-have players. I'm targeting these players in all fantasy football leagues as far as dynasty and rebounds. These are gonna be guys that I'm gonna have on my draft guide. Like my draft guide is gonna be different. I'm not gonna talk about a bunch of players that know that doesn't really matter to me, as far as my opinion. I'm going to give you my tiers of guys that you should be drafting. And if you're not on the on the draft guide, that means that I'm not big on it. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to hit or not to draft that player, but I'm going to give you guys that you can get. That way they're going to win. Last year, guys, I'm going to tell you my guys, go check out my catalog. Because a lot of people might say, this guy's in the car, man, and he's doing this, and where's this, and where's the – he needs to put the uh, – this is even two years ago. But I said, five receivers in the league, everybody said I was crazy. Ah, man, he's passionate. He's passionate. That's what he's doing. He, I like his content because he's passionate. Tyreek Hill ended up being the number one wide receiver two years in a row. I said the tour was going to be a baller with Tyreek Hill. Ah, Tua can't pass. They need a quarterback. They need a quarterback. Nobody's talking about Tua. They, they need another quarterback. Even though I believe Tua's not on Phenom, but, he, but with Tyreek Hill, when you have a guy like Tyreek Hill, you can ball out. Um, so those are, and I talked about Amarada last two years that he was one of the best wide receivers in the league. He ain't that explosive. He can't get open. Jer Jared Goff. Jared Goff was another quarterback that I was on. So, um, who else? Who were some other players? I just want to give y'all a little bit of context before I get out of here of a couple other players. Uh, that I was on. There we go. Just turn the light on. A couple other players that I was on. Um, let me see. Who else? Jordan Love. I talked about Jordan Love. I talked about CJ Stroud. I talked about Lamar Jackson. I talked about wide receiver. So, guys, make sure you go follow me and, and target these players. I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Y'all guys be safe. Every once in a while, guys, like I told you, I'm going to do these vertical lives. Uh, this is a new feature on YouTube. Uh, make sure you become a member of the channel. You get perks. Uh, and you can refer videos if you want a personal video or whatever. Whatever you need, guys, just let me know. He said, what do you think of Najee Harris? So, great question, AJB. I think Najee Harris is what I call a honey-touch running back. 
So every running back is not going to be a 1,500-yard running back like a Kyle Williams and have a tremendous season. But you don't need that type of running back to win your fantasy league. You need guys who's going to be getting 100% of the green zone touches. Now, I don't think he's going to get 100% of the green zone touches, but I do believe he's going to get 75% of that because of the way he runs. He's very, very uh, violent runner, and he's great short yardage. So I think Najee Harris is going to be a good running back to pick up um, for his value. I think you're going to be able to get him real late. Um, man, I, this is I'm a zero RB guy. So me, after I get my top end wide receivers, and I mean plural, and if I can, if they're still on the board, and make sure you uh, get a consultation, man, if you want to see how I draft, because it's, it's not, I don't always go zero RB, but I'm looking to go zero RB. But after I get my top wide receivers, and I go get my top quarterback and then maybe a real, really good tight end, then I start drafting a lot of running backs. And just and then because somebody's going to hit, somebody's going to get hurt. And so I'm drafting backups. I'm back. I'm drafting guys like David Montgomery. I had the guys like that on my team because I know anybody could ball out at the running back positions. It's so volatile that you got to try to get a lot of them. So usually, man, I have about three or four running backs on my bench. And I draft a lot of late guys. That's why I hit Raheem Mostert. I didn't know Raheem Mostert was going to ball out, but I drafted him because I know running backs are volatile. I hit Kyron Williams in the league. Why? Not because I thought Kyron Williams was the best running back on the Rams, because I drafted Cam Akers in some other leagues. But Kyron Williams ended up hitting, and I had drafted him because I'm always drafting running backs late. So after you get your studs, man, take those middle-tier dead zone running backs that a lot of people don't want. One of those guys is going to hit. I, James Conner, I'm not telling you you draft him early, but he's, he can hit. Najee Harris, Jalen Warren. Um, There's a few more other guys are like that. Uh, Tony Pollard is going to fall into that this year. Uh, Zach Moss is going to fall into that this year. A lot of those type of running backs, man. So that's what I believe about Najee. I think he's a good value to pick up, but don't draft him too early. Let the draft come to you when if you want to get Najee Harris. All right, guys. Well, thank y'all for tuning in. Um, make sure you go to the comment section and let me know if I, if you think I missed anybody or you have any uh, video opinions. I'm always open-minded. Y'all guys be safe. Peace.